What's up guys, I'm Desi for Not Gaming and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to make a war pipe build for those who really don't like the catalyst cell. And yeah, this build right here does not use catalyst so I don't use any tonic in any battle in this video. And it will still work very well although you will need a little bit effort in the beginning. So what you need to do is pick up the molten orbs for your attack speed and as well as wounding the behemoth. Because that's your source of attack speed from this build so let's just keep stabbing it this one is hard to evade okay thank god okay. i think okay let's knock him down take up the molten cell and looks like it's the left leg so let's keep stabbing the left leg hoping we can get the oh no ah uh, god damn it okay that's okay it's wounded so after you wound the behemoth it's time to do the spinning attack on anywhere you want okay i would prefer the head first for the stagger and I would still prefer the head afterwards because you can get even more stagger when the beam is staggered. And after you get the uh, wounding in, you keep spinning and the behemoth will be dead in like several seconds. Okay, oh, oh no, don't hit me. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, easy. Just keep spinning and it's dead. Pretty easy. Oh no, the ice spike still spawn after it's dead. Okay. And as you can see, this build is really good. I know it's a Frost Behemoth. We are not going to fight a Frost Behemoth next. And I'm going to show you the build after I sip this air fans. Yep. The high attack speed you see just now was not from Catalyst or anything else. It's from Molten and your Aether Rush. So let's just check out the build real quick. So here's the build guys and as usual I'm going to go through the perk summary first and as you can see in the perk summary there is no catalyst. The only source of attack speed from this build is from Molten which gives you 15% and the Relentless which doubles the effect of Aether Rush which means you get 30% attack speed and that is a total of 45%. Usually when I use a catalyst I only gain like 27.5% attack speed and that's actually enough for most of the battles and 45% there is actually more than enough. And Relentless here not only give the attack speed but also give you 30% damage, movement speed and stamina regeneration and that's the... That's a very good sell. Especially when you pair up with a war pipe with Acidic. You can wound the behemoth real fast, you can activate the Aetherus almost for the whole battle. And yep, that's actually very good but before we go through that one I'm going to explain the Berserker here. Because the Berserker can actually works very well with weapon like war pipe or chain blitz which hits very fast and especially with this 45% attack speed boost you can get the berserker uptime for the whole battle not letting it drop back down to zero and here's cunning and pulse and discipline for your critical and acidic right here so i'm going to explain the gameplay here so the only thing you do for this build here is you're going to start by stabbing the behemoth until a single part is wounded Okay, that's the first thing you do so that you activate the Aether Rush, you get your 30% damage boost and attack speed boost and everything boost. And after that, you're going to continue the rest of the battle with the heavy attacks. The heavy attacks can also deal wounding damage thanks to Acidic. And not surprisingly, the spinning attack of course deal more damage than the stabbing attack. And yep, we have overpower here as well. The stabbing attack cannot deal stagger damage. But the spinning attack can deal stagger damage. So you spin the behemoths, you knock them down, overpower activates, you have very high attack speed, and voila, the behemoth is dead. So that's the perk summary, now we're going to go through the build. Destructs helmet with berserker, destructs body with relentless, hellion with berserker, and chronovore with pulse. I mean, see Panga Shrine here because you can, as I said before, you can knock the behemoths down pretty easily, fairly easily, and slowing them down can get a few hits in, and maximizing the effects of overpower. Fit in the Molten Cell, and if you don't want Pangal Shrine, that's fine, you can switch it to anything else you want, there is no limitation. And here's the weapon, Pyroclastic Envoy, which is Blaze, with Acidic, Relentless, and Savage Wellspring. This one is actually really good, because it gives 30% critical strike chance, combined with Cunning, that's 40%, and with Discipline, that's 48%. And when you activate the Discipline state, that is 98% critical strike chance, so almost every single hit is a critical. Can you imagine that? And that's how good Savage Wellspring is. And here's Executioner's Spearhead. Because we're using Acidic right here, you can wound the Behemoth real fast. And that really helps with the damage boost from Executioner's Spearhead. Gives you 8% damage boost for 45 seconds, stacks up to 5 times, which means it's 40% damage boost. And that's really good. Although if you don't want this Executioner's Spearhead, you can always switch to Barb Spearhead to get, to get additional wounding damage when you dodge and then you light attack. And that's actually pretty good too. 
and if you don't want this too then you can switch to the munitions amplifier this can increase your critical strike chance to 37.5% which actually which is actually pretty good too but for me I prefer the executioner spearhead because I can gain 40% damage boost that's really high and bonnet with inferno's arrow this one is good too especially with the pulse because every 15 hit in a row okay and the pulse activates every fifth hit so every third occurrence of the pulse will give you a guaranteed critical with 200 more damage and a major blaze damage so that's the build guys all right so we're going to continue this battle to i guess i really want to fight that scrape but let's go to that razor kiribus because i did say i'm not going to fight a frost behemoth next although i'm quite certain that i'm going to fight that scrape that Laban culture sounds good too, but yep, let's do this Reza Kiri. It's kind of hard to wound the tail, but let's try to wound the tail because it's, it's the easiest part to hit. As usual, it's going to do an attack, okay? Oh, okay, that's close. The head will be an easier target, but looks like our position here is not really good. So I'll just keep stabbing whatever I can stab. Okay, evade a bit, take out the Molten Cell, activate your special, there's your chance, and let's stab the head. Oh no, I think it's too far away. Yep, it's too far away. Only two steps got in. Ah, all right, let's continue this battle. Evet that one is going to hit. Okay, keep stabbing the tail. It's standing still. That's your chance. Oh no. Take the molten. Keep stabbing. All right, it's going to make a move where it's going to go down again. Here's where we step. Let's hope we can get a wound here. Never mind, we cannot. Okay, let's just keep stabbing it. I think the tail is bound to get wounded anytime soon. Wound? Come on. It's standing still. There we go. Yeah, there we go. That's the wounded. Alright, so next we're going to do the spinning attack as always. I have told you. Okay. Oh, it got up pretty fast this time. I don't think this will last long. And the head is wounded. Let's break through this radiant shield so that we can reposition ourselves. Okay, activate special, keep spinning it, no problem. I just, I'm just hope, I'm just hoping that I can break the tail, but I guess not. Activate your special because it's going to drop down. S start spinning because it's going to the stagger. Okay, keep spinning it, it's going to die soon. If it's down, then it's dead because you have overpower. Remember that. You have overpower, you have high attack speed, and that's really good. Every single spin can deal wounding damage as well on unwounded parts, and that's really good. Okay, and as you can see, Razakiri, yep, it took quite a while because we don't have our initial attacks, but that's still good. Okay, as I said, I'm going to fight this grave right here. Labong Kosa is actually a easy target. Okay, let's do this. If I can kill this grave fast, I'm going to go to, to that Lightbound Koshai. And I'm going to show you how I can kill the Lightbound Koshai real fast too. Okay, let's start with the initial wounding. I still have the Aether Rush from the previous battle and that's really good so that I can wound it pretty fast. That's 30% attack speed. Okay. Let's start spinning because we have wounded apart. Should be pretty easy. Yep, it's angry. Someone looks angry. Evade. Don't worry about evading in the middle of your spins because you can literally evade in the middle of your spins. Okay, this one should be dead soon. Yep, it's on a fourth of HP and yep, it's dead. Very easy, right? That's why I want to fight the Scrave. It's such an easy target for this weapon. Alright, so since I said I, if I kill the Scrave first, I'm going to the Lightbound Koshai. So let's do the Lightbound Koshai. Although I don't think my Aether Rush is going to hold that long for me to get to the Lightbound Koshai. So we are going to fight this guy at non rush form I mean status or anything else okay so let's just go through it should be no problem because like Bunko says is easy target so start with a laser but I don't know if I get this close nope it's starting with a ram it should start with a laser if we get too far away just like the normal Koshai which will oh it's not a ram a, no a normal Koshai will jump to you especially the shadow touch version discipline and let's keep stabbing Okay, that's our chance because it's not going to do anything when it's on that motion. Out. Okay. Nobody sees that. Oh, nobody sees that too. Okay, let's keep spinning. Should be pretty easy target. It's going to get enraged soon. 
I'm gonna try to hit it in the middle out in the middle of these orbs okay okay that's just in the middle of those spinning orbs and that's really cool I don't even expect that but yep this should be a pretty easy fight as you can see this guy cannot even do anything you just keep spinning and it's gonna be dead soon so that's how you play it as you can see on every single battle that I do I always start with a stabbing you need to wound apart to get your 30% attack speed boost and that is the key to this build without attack speed in a game like this you you really can't do anything you really need a high attack speed to execute a combo real fast and yep as usual play it safe you should be able to use this build easily and that's all for the video i hope you guys enjoy it please don't forget to like and subscribe it's free and you can always subscribe thank you for watching i'll see you guys in the next video